Welcome back to Mento et Oblivisir, a game of forgetful heroes. Um, I am your DM, Raven. My pronouns are they, them. Hi, I'm playing um, Bubbles Utonium. Um, my name is Tiana, and my pronouns are they, she. I am playing uh, Captain Steve Rogers uh, with my pal Bucky the Rat. Mouse, rat, could be both. Either way, uh, my pronouns, I guess, he and him. Uh, and, uh, we are on our way. And uh, I'm playing Queen Elsa of Arendelle, um, and I go by he, him. All right, so um, before we do every session, um, usually at the end, or if I forget to at the end... Um, I have some questions that I put through a random number generator and help us um, get to, to know the cast a little bit better. And so last time, our question was number 21, who was your first fictional crush? So mine was um, Jack Spicer from Shaolin Showdown. I guess, uh, I don't know, I just, I like nerdy redheads. <laughs> Usually, if there's a scientist character. I'm probably I probably either want to be their friend or I want to date them. <laughs> my my first fictional crush, uh, not a cartoon, was a real person. Um, I mine was uh, Brendan Fraser's character from The Mummy. I thought really hard about this for a really long time, and I was like, man, that's a long time ago. But yeah, no, definitely. Brendan Fraser and the Mummy. I think for for me, my earliest recollection was when my sisters turned on She-Ra, and I was like, "Oh wow!" And uh, I still look back on that time when it was like, "Yeah, I guess that that would have been the first fictional crush." Um, it's just uh, it's funny how you remember things like that. I have to say. Fictional crush. Shira was a good one. I got to tell you. So I'll give it to you there. That I, I didn't even think of that. Now that you mentioned it, it is kind of resonating somewhere there. Um, but my first <laughs> fictional crush would have to be uh, Kelly LeBrock, Weird Science, 1985. Okay. I just putting it out there. It's like stone for me. And that's just the way it is. she was a computer generated person or a female. And for then, that's what it's been. All right. Um, let's see. Um, for an inspiration point, who wants to do a little recap of last week's um, session? I definitely can. I'll test how good my note taking was last week. Okay, go for it. Um, so we are on uh, in the parallel Earth n named Uars, um, where fandoms are real. Uh, we started out in uh, the Temple of the Witch, um, where we all woke up on these slabs with our memories forgotten um, and slips of parchment uh, with our names on them. Uh, and so we met um, Bubbles, Stephen, Bucky, um, Elsa, and Han. Um, and uh, we encountered some really worn out writing in Sylvan and spent absolutely no time trying to uh, figure out uh, what it stood for. So uh, then we decided, well, we might as well leave this room and um, giant raven bird human hybrid things attacked. Uh, and uh, that was a rough battle for us first little levels. Um, but we managed uh, to come out unscathed um, and did some looting and things like that. And then um, we headed pretty much just, we went forward. We had options to go left or right, and we just decided that we were going to go straight because Bubbles has impulse control uh, problems. Um, where she, in the next room, decided to touch a silver sickle uh which and 
then promptly took with her, which ended up being a moonsickle. And then we went into the following room where there was even more of the sleeping raven bird people. Um, and we quietly snuck through to the exit. Uh, thankfully, we had some uh, some good stealth rolls there and things like that. Where outside, we encountered the Mistress of Evil herself, Maleficent, uh, only to be saved very quickly by uh, Glinda, the good fairy slash witch of the North, um, who then whisked us off to the Quadling Lands, um, where we are, where, where she basically filled us in that we have to find our weapons of great importance to us or objects of great importance to us so that we can defeat the mistress of evil. And then we went shopping and did some rolls on uh, some magic items. I found some cool stuff. All right. Awesome. I think that sounds like everything. Uh, take, take an inspiration point. Thanks. That was good note taking. Yeah. Great job, by the way. This will be a little bit of a different session, but this is what I had planned. So uh, let's uh, jump into it. Um, the book opens up again, this time turning into a page that reads Book 2, Friendly Combat. Then as it did earlier, it fades into a new scene. Days upon days were spent under the sun of Glinda's kingdom before she finally called you up to your throne room to announce her next test for your group. And so I'm going to go and ask everyone what they've been up to since last time. But first, I have a few um, notes about uh, last time. So um, Steve and Elsa, that sprouting itchy feeling never really goes away. In fact, it gets worse until one day you notice something. Elsa, you probably notice it first. Little tiny black wisps on your wrists, your ankles, your face. They grow thicker and longer and darker by the day. There comes a day where you wake up and realize you're beginning to become fe- you be- you're beginning to become covered in bl- black feathers. Uh, bubbles. Something feels very right to you about being surrounded by so many women and girls at Glinda's Palace, like you've been surrounded by strong women all your life. At night, you dream of a blur of color like a mini rainbow: blue, pink, green. And I did write one up for Han, but I can give that to Lior next time. So, um, knowing that and everything that happened last time, what have you been up to um, since the last session? What's your, what have your characters been up to? Um, how long, how, sorry, how long has passed? Like um, about a week? Yeah, I'd say about a week, yeah. Would I have been able to read the Tome of Understanding over the past week? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Cool. My wisdom score increases by two. I will update my character sheet. So I think um, Elsa, realizing she was also a spellcaster, would have tried to learn all the spells that she could. Um, And I don't know, DM, if there's a limit to that, if she if she was able to learn everything that she could do or um, how that would work with the amnesia. Um, So I would say you would definitely be able to have as many spells as you would be able to have for this level. Okay. Then yeah, that, that would be task one and task two would be looking for a healer to uh, look what, what the heck is going on with these black wisps, feathers growing on my face. Are there any healers? Yes. Um, Glinda has a special healer um, called Larissa. Um, Larissa is a Triton woman, um, and she can examine you. All right. Then I go to Larissa and say, hey, can you figure out what's, what's wrong with me? Uh, so she she asks you some questions. Um, she asks if anyone has recently um, cast some sort of polymorph spell on you. Have you been bitten by anything strange? Have you yeah, drank anything strange? Yeah, if I remember correctly, we were were we bitten or scratched by the birds? I don't remember what they did. 
I believe it was a beak attack. A beak attack, yeah. That'll be it. And what sort of creature were you bitten by? Uh, by this by this creature with its beak? Uh, some kind of bird human hybrid. I don't. Oh, I don't oh, know dear. if we figured out the name. I th- I think I I know what has happened. Uh, was anyone else um, hit with the with one of these attacks that you know of in your group? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it was, was it Steve also who got the big attack. Yes. So I I believe um, Maleficent has used her mind control magics um, to basically control all of the were ravens. And I believe you've been bitten by one, and that you are turning into a were raven yourself. Oh my! What what can we do to fix that? I I don't know of any cures myself. Um, do you do you know of anybody who can who might be able to heal me, or some mystical object or something that could cure this? I I do know of a lycanthropy specialist in the Emerald City. Well, uh, do they? Do you know their name? Uh, Clegane, I believe. All right, and then would I, you know, after having this conversation with Larissa, would would I be able to get to the Emerald City, or is that uh, compared to where we are? Is that part of Emerald City or separate from Emerald City? Um, it is separate. Um, you are um, you are north of the Emerald City. Um, it would be um, a ways, uh, especially just to walk. And about how long would it take to walk there? Um, probably a few weeks on foot. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I, uh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say that I convey that inf- information to Steve as well. Um, my character would certainly be uh, I don't know, working out, training, exercising, hanging out with Bucky, just you know, doing whatever we can. But uh, I do notice I do have these feathery wisps coming from me. So I'm not sure if I can, but I'm curious, would I be able to heal myself? Mm. Um, let me actually look that up. I certainly would have tried. Or will have tried. Let's see. Uh... So I would say that it's not so much a disease as it is a curse. So you would not be able to heal yourself. Okay, I can appreciate that. But I, we would have tried, obviously, because, uh, you know, you see something come at you, you would have tried. Okay, so uh, yeah. I would have made that I would have made that effort, obviously. Failed, um, and then would would have moved on obviously to oh that's great news thank you for telling uh elsa you're very welcome so we should figure out somebody who can hear this sometime soon i imagine i would say so otherwise we may turn into where something raven so oh while i'm here i would have been like i said exercising and training i just wanted to know since i have a two for hand two two handed attack, but I'm always holding a shield, could I potentially use it as either an unarmed strike or I don't know, spell two point attack just to make it based on the character? Um, yes, definitely. Thank you. Did you want, how, how was that two point? Was that an unarmed strike or was that a two point roll? What were we going with that? Uh, I'm gonna say, um, like, uh, unarmed strike, or maybe an improvised strike, um, depending. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. I was thinking about that all week, so I was just at a 1D for bludgeoning or something like that. Two-two. Yeah, well, let me make sure. Um, so I forget, it's been a while since I've had to make an improvised attack or anything. So I would say, yeah, uh, I would say 1d4 plus um, strength or dex, depending on what you're using. But just don't add your proficiency modifier. Gotcha. Sounds good. Linda was rather hesitant to explain her next task to you, but long last she finally revealed that in order to get a sense of your capabilities, you must all fight each other in the arena. 
She assures you that there will be no lasting damage. She will heal you right up, and it's only to unconsciousness. There will be a special reward for the winner. Well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, my, my uh, character would be down for it, because it's, it's sparring, it's training, it's anything else that would... Uh... I mean this in the nicest way possible, but you are going down. Elsa just rolls her eyes. I have strategies, you guys are not ready for all right, so um, Glinda leads you to the arena around the back of the palace. It is hewn from marble, and like most things in the Quadling country, it is decorated in pink and red. Glinda's 50 attendants, as well as Glinda's bodyguards, line the seats, but there is no other audience. She attaches to each of your wrists a red heart symbol, explaining that this will help her keep track of your progress in battle. Glinda stands in the middle of the battlefield in the midst of the three of you. Here are the rules. Non-lethal damage only. No healing potions. Magic is allowed so long as it is non-lethal and will have no lasting effect on your party members. You may begin at any time. So Glinda conjures up a bubble and floats to the stands and she sits next to the captain of her bodyguards. An elegant orcish woman with one golden glowing eye. So, uh, when you're ready, um, roll initiative. Okay, is wow. that free-for-all kind of thing? I mean, fight whoever you want. Um, so the glowing, the glowing heart symbol, um, it will be keeping track of basically your lives, and you will be getting three lives. Um, and so whoever has the most lives at the end or takes out the most people um, is the winner, and you will have. Did I say you will have three lives? Basically, like a video yes. game. Yes. 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 Okay. Yep. Yeah. So basically, uh, yeah. Should die three times. <laughs> I when I play tested this with my other group, it just went by too quickly with the one, uh, one round. So I thought uh, this would make it more interesting. So we put the three black bars across our left arm. It's uh, it's a red <laughs> heart. Oh, it's uh, a red heart. Like okay. Juman- oh, did you mean like in Jumanji? <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like a. It, it does look a little bit like a pixelated um, red heart, like uh, would be in an '80s video game. Gotcha. Okay, even better. Can we get some Super Mario music while we're at it? Mm. <laughs> uh, okay, so rolling initiative. Rolling initiative. Oh, whopping! I'm gonna be last. We we'll take a beaten three. All right. So. Um... It looks like uh, Elsa is going first again. Nice. All right. So how yeah, far? Are... Last time too. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. The, the god, the gods are with me as beginning. Um, I need it. So yeah. Um, <laughs> how how far away are we from each other at this point? I'm gonna say you're probably each about ten feet apart from each other. Okay. Well, I'm just let's see here. Well. No time like the present to play sorcerer. Um, and I'm going to cast Frostbite on Steve, which is a con save of 14. Ooh. All right, then, uh, Steve, make a con save. 12. You needed a 14. So, Frosty. so that was my attack. And then how, how big is this? Um, I take it three damage. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was three. How, how big is this stadium or coliseum or whatever it is that we're in? Um, see, I don't know right off what, like, it, I would say, like, maybe, like, the coliseum in Rome, but I don't know right off how big that is. Like, it's it's pretty big. So, casting that, um, I'm going to try to stay equidistant to them uh, and then run. Uh, 30 feet directly away from them. And was the frostbite um, a whole action? Uh, well, actually, I don't know. Um, it was a cantrip, so... It should yes, say, it like... Okay, um, so I, I think that would um, be all you that you would be able to do, I believe. Um, or... Can you still run them? Uh, you know what? You can still move. I don't care. I don't care if it's against the rules. Or not. 
Well, no, she'd be able to move anyway. It wasn't wasn't in melee. She was attacking. So moving is a lot. All right. So, um, all right. You can move another um, 30 feet away or um, however many you would like. Yeah. I'll take my full 30. All right. So hopefully at this point I'm 35, 40 feet away. You can do 30, uh, 40 feet away because you're 10 feet away from the energy. Yeah. You'd be about 40 feet away from everyone else. All right. And uh, that's my turn. All right, it uh, is Bubbles' turn. Alrighty. Um, Bubbles is going to uh, transform her shell in using her first wild shape ever and is going to turn into um, a dire wolf. Ooh, that, nice. Because uh, I got my circle of the moon uh, last on the level up there. Um, so I am going to turn into a blue dire wolf. All right, awesome. And uh, yeah, I will. I will attack. Well, Steve just got frozen, so I feel a little bit bad. I'm gonna try and attack Elsa. Don't don't feel bad. And I think you're. Yeah, well, I <laughs> think Elsa is gonna be my biggest competition. So <laughs> that's what I want to hear. <laughs> she rolled her eyes at me, and I'm not pleased about it. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i'll use my first uh, uh wild shape there and yeah um okay so my bite is a plus five to hit so let me roll to see if i can bite you so i'm like 40 feet away did you have enough movement to get to me yes i do i have yeah. 50 feet of movement and you can transform and that's not an action. It's you're able to do it's it. Bonus anything. action. Wow. Yeah. Pay no attention to this roll that I just made. And okay, roll plus five to hit. Uh, twenty to hit. That definitely hits. Okay, so that is two d six plus three damage. Oops, that was just one d six. Uh, I need to roll one more d6 for a total of 10 damage. Ouch, that hurts. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you need to make a strength saving throw or I knock you over. All right. That needed to beat a 13, so you have fallen over. All righty, and that is it for my turn. All right, it is Steve's turn. Okay, so I got Elsa at 40 feet, right? Yeah. And bubbles is where? About ten feet away? Yeah, next to next to Elsa. Oh you're next to forty feet also? Yep. Yep. Could you both running away over there? Get over here so I can touch you. Um <laughs> uh, I am going to do, do, I'm going to this means do ball. Can I or you're gonna this is gonna be an action. Um Put my sword away and pull out a javelin from my back. Yeah, go for it. Action? Yeah, that's. I'm that's not gonna make you do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna make you do an action to swap weapons. Okay, good. So yeah, I would pull out a javelin, and I would throw it right at Elsa, over burning me with this cold. Bite. Yeah. I'm not, I'm knocked over. Does that give me any? You're knocked over. That is a good point. That would give me disadvantage. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there is a very water. large wolf standing next to Elsa, though. There is a very large wolf. Yep. Yeah, the wolf has an attack. Interesting. If you don't want disadvantage on your attack, there. That's a good point. But at this point, I'm working on your ego. <laughs> so here we go. Um, I'm going to attack. <laughs> uh, where's my job? I gotta figure out where the hell it is. There it is. Well, that. There you go. There's a six. I guess that's a no-go. Got a 16. So we take the six. That's a miss. Swing. Bada bada. So it looks like you had a plus five. So did you roll a one, a now one then? Plus, uh, not counting the five? Sorry, when? I rolled twice. One with disadvantage was a six the, and a 16. Yeah. The six, oh, oh, you want to see if it's a now one? I got you. I got you. Yeah. Uh, it's a equals, yep. Yeah. I rolled that one plus five equals six. Yep. 
All right, so you, because you got a nat one, um, you kind of arc back to throw the javelin, but instead you trip and you... Um, you trip and you actually end up just like um, hitting yourself with the javelin um, as you fall. So you take... Um, a D4 of bludgeoning damage, uh, because you whacked yourself with it as you fell. So, let me... So, you take four damage, um, from injuring yourself with your javelin. Wonderful. But at least I keep my job. Alright, so it's back up to Elsa's turn. So, would Elsa be prone? Yeah, Elsa was prone from my attack. Okay, so because you are prone, you will have to use, um, is it all your movement speed or half your movement speed to get back up? I forget which. I'm pretty sure. So you'll have I, to use, sorry. No, sorry. Uh, I didn't catch whether that was half or all. Oh, um, let me look real quick. I usually have to get up. <laughs> I can't spell it. <laughs> uh, I, I spelled prine instead of prone, whatever prine is. Almost like a prawn. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I think it's just half your movement speed. Um, that's what it, I'm seeing. Yeah, it's half. So um, you'll only be able to move 15 feet this, this amount of time if, if you um, decide to stand up from being prone. All right. Um, I will attempt to stand up. Um, and then I would like to cast Sleep on bubbles. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. That's um, okay. So I new to sleep here. Uh, does it? I didn't. I didn't see a a save or anything like that on it. No, nope, uh, you just roll the dice. All right. Yeah. All right. Twenty. I have thirty-seven hit points as a dire wolf. So then the spell fails. Yeah, I don't fall asleep. Yep. Well, so that was my action. I think that's all I can do. Um, yep, I'm I'm not looking too good. All right. Um, it is Bubbles' turn again. Alrighty. I guess uh, since I'm right next to you, I will continue to attack Elsa. Okay. You did just try to put me asleep, and that, although it made me sleepy. It was not enough. No. Um, that hey, the is... player sleepy, not the character. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, that's only an eight to hit. Does not hit. Awesome. For you, that is not awesome for me. Um, okay, well, uh, that is that is my turn. <laughs> I right. get one bite to turn. <laughs> It is Steve's turn again. Okay, well, Steve is tired of looking like a bumbling idiot over here. So, Steve is... Um, I, I can't put the over there, first. it feels weird, but uh, my character is basically going to launch 15 feet into the air, because I can fly, <laughs> and fly over about 30 feet uh, towards them, um, and ready a, an attack action. All right, awesome. Is that the end of your turn? That is, yes. All right, so it's back up to Elsa. Um, well, Elsa doesn't have a lot of options here. Um, I guess since we're right next to each other, I'm going to try Shocking Grasp on Bubbles. Ooh. Okay. All right, and let's see if this works. Shocking Grasp Shocking uh, my AC is 14. Jeez, nothing is working today. <laughs> I'm feeling better. I have myself my own javelin. <laughs> <laughs> You're only doing slightly worse than I am. <laughs> I haven't hit a single thing. I've been hurt three to two times. I've done three damage. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Four damage to myself. I'm at seven down already. But I hear you. I hear you. It's nothing, nothing seems to be. 
You look like a bunch of idiots that couldn't protect uh, a quadling. Well, don't don't you worry. I look like a super cool blue wolf, and I'm doing <laughs> great. <laughs> Small but mighty. Small but mighty fairy. <laughs> All right. So, Elsa, let's go. All We're right. Done. So, yeah. Uh, I I think then Elsa's turn is over. So back to bubbles. Alrighty. I'm going to try and attack Elsa again. Okay. A Fifteen to hit this time. That hits. Alrighty, so that's a 2d6 plus 3. And Ooh, I rolled real low on those ones. Uh, that's a 6 total of damage. Well, Elsa's still down. Elsa it lost all of her health? Yep. Alright, so Elsa, your heart, um, it flashes from red to orange, and you are down to 2 lives. So does that just mean I'm back up to 15 hit points? Yeah, back your your, H, your HP is back. Um, you still have the same amount of spell slots, but your HP is back up to full. And if I used a spell slot, it's still used? Yes. Right. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, just keep in mind, um, your cantrips, you, you don't need spell slots for those. You can right. use those um, no that matter will. how many. Yeah, you can yeah. use those... Um, as, as much as you are um, allowed to. Which is unlimited, but yes. So, Elsa down to two uh, lives, everyone else still at three, and it is Steve's turn. Okay. I will uh, attack, I want to say the dire wolf because it's kicking butt, but I can't. I, I do see that Elsa's back up and did hurt me, and I have issues. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, try and attack uh, also with a melee attack. Okay. A strong sword, a long sword first, which is a nine, which does miss. Misses. Yep. But I have a bonus shield I will attack with, which is an 18. That definitely hits. That's four by bludgeoning. Bludgeoning damage. All right. All right. Um, back, uh, uh, back to Elsa. So basically, am I sort of surrounded, or I can I can run back still? Um, but they're engaged with me, so I, they would get an opportunity attack. That's correct. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, there's not much I can do. Um, it's really pesky that the uh, that the dire wolf can go fifty feet, though. So, uh, I basically they can't sleep you. Well, I'm just gonna pitch you with frostbite, which is a con save, 14. Okay. Uh let's okay. Constitution saving throw. And my wolf's constitution is plus two. Ooh. <laughs> that was a nat one. So three total. All right. Oh my, I made a mistake. Um, just well, sorry to interrupt, but I just made it, just read that uh, as a flying creature, you can't block. Ew. You can attack me, but you can't. Hmm. Just uh, so everybody's aware now, even, even playing field. So you can't block, is that what you said? You can't block. Your, your AC means that. Oh, we can't block you? Unless you're flying. Yep. Oh. Or unless I'm not flying. Well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure something out. I'm not saying you can't attack me. I'm just saying I, I block. Sorry. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Who's next? Yeah, it is Bubbles. Figured that was an important bit of figured that was an important bit of information. Yeah, I, I guess for everyone probably should know that. Yes, definitely. Um, would I be able to jump up and bite at Steve? Um, I would say yes, depending on how high up are you, Steve. Uh, fifteen feet. Okay. Um, I didn't would... you have to be next to? Didn't you have to be next to us to attack? I'm fifteen Elsa? feet above you. I'm fi- I'm about fifteen feet above. Oh, I don't think I can make that jump. Um, make any jump with enough dexterity and accuracy. Yeah. Well. Or whatever. Uh, 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 yeah, dexterity and accuracy. You want to I am a wolf. <laughs> I cannot fly yet. 
That's okay. Yeah, I don't get a flight speed. Well, uh, sorry, Elsa. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't reach Steve. So uh, I'm going to try to bite you again. Everyone's just ganging up on Elsa, and I'm just picturing I, this. I picture. I feel the, really bad. <laughs> I'm just picturing the scene in Office Space where they do destroy the printer by Elsa. <laughs> That's where my brain went to. Goodness. Yeah, yeah, thirteen definitely hits. Alrighty, um, for eight damage. Just so you are aware, yes, um, you can reach. A creature within uh, ten to fifteen feet in an in attack flying budget. Um, if you have this movement, five feet can be ten. So that's a bit more reading about flying combat. Combat <laughs> jumping is like the one thing that I have to look up every single time. So I was like, I'll just, I'll, I'll just attack who's next to me on the ground for now. And uh yeah, that's I, I bite I, I bite Elsa and that is my turn. Alright, back up to Steve. Okay. Um well Steve I am within uh, attacking reach, at least according to my character. Uh and you can attack doing a jumping attack if you so have the dexterity to do so. Um would attack uh, the wolf at this point, coming down uh, with an attack. Um, going to attack. Sorry. Uh, I will swing at a fourteen to hit the dire wolf. Meets it, beats it. Meets it, beats it. Okay. And <laughs> attack. Uh, swing at damage. Damage is a ten. Okay. And that will a bonus attack with my shield for 17. So it's talents. Sorry. Same 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 roll though. And that would yep, be that hits. and that would be for a four damage. Uh that's it. Alright. Um back to Elsa then. Well, Elsa's feeling very indecisive, but you know, she's just gonna cast uh I think she's just gonna cast sleep again. On, on bubbles, because uh, that she's got less hit points now, right? I do. So, yep. um, ah, I hate. I hate it. Oh man, I'm not rolling well. I'm assuming that failed. It does by like only two. <laughs> yeah, it's close though. And at this point, uh, Elsa's just gonna. Well, no, she can't run away. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not much you can do. All right. Um, back up to bubbles. Alrighty. I am going to try and jump and bite Steve. Go for it. Do I need to roll then my dexterity? My strength? I don't know what I need to roll to jump higher. I'm going to say to jump, definitely dex. Okay. That's a plus two, right? Yeah. Thirteen. To jump up and reach him potentially. Okay. Um. Hmm. Would that have to do with AC or just jumping? Hmm. Your call. I'm. I'm gonna say that has to do with jumping. I'm gonna say he's close enough that you can get him. Um. But if you want to hit or attack, you're gonna have to make uh, another one against AC. Well, I bite my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not one on that roll. Woo! Yeah, uh, I think you actually do bite your tongue. Uh, take a d4 of piercing damage. Ouch. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Here we go. All right. <laughs> We've had a lot of that ones today. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, back up to Steve. Okay, I'm going to attack the wolf again. But uh, what we did before, I didn't need to do because there's no way of blocking me. 
So you can't block me with whatever arm you have, and I will attack, and you will take the pain. Wait, that's uh, on your left. Here we go. Um, swing and pain. Boom. Five slashing damage. Right. And four bludgeoning damage. All righty. All right. Um, if you're ending your turn there, it is back up to the top with yeah. Elsa. Well, Elsa's just going to keep trying different things until something pans out. Something pans out. Um, <laughs> and uh, she's going to try shock and grasp again. I'm assuming 25 hits. Holy, yeah. Yeah, that definitely hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. For one damage. I. <laughs> I do not have lady luck today. Don't take me to any casinos. That was that was almost a critical hit too. Um, okay, uh, back up to Elsa. Uh, not Elsa, sorry, Bubbles. Well, I'm still a wolf. I'm going to attempt another jump. Go for it. Uh, so here's for my jump. Will a ten make it up there? I'm going to say a ten does not make it up there. Well, I jump in the air. <laughs> you just you jump in the air, and and that's and that's it. You just jump in the air. Uh, you don't. Yeah, I I don't I don't get to no, bite. Just, the audience just kind of the audience just kind of looks at you and like scratches scratches their head like they're just like oh she, bubbles she just kind of she just kind of jumped okay. Yep. Yep. I I did do that. I I guess um, if you're done, uh, back up to Steve. Uh, I'm gonna keep trying to kill this wolf. It's it's, it's kind of tough. Uh, very, very resilient. Very resilient. <laughs> this time might hurt. Okay. Um, so I'm going to attack, and because it can't block me, it's going to hit. That's going to be six damage. Okay. Still a wolf. Barely. Um, not done yet. I'm going to <laughs> cast Divine Smite because I was able to attack with a melee attack and hit. I can cast it. It's going to be a 2d8 for 9 smite damage. Okay. I am a small fairy again. That's going to cost me a level, a, a spell, spell slot. Um, and I'm going to Use my bonus action to attack with my shield. Okay. For four bludgeoning damage. Great thing. All right. Uh, back up to Elsa. Did Bubbles go down or no? Bubbles is no longer a wolf, but Bubbles has not gone down. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Elsa was very disappointed with the damage of Shock and Grass, but she likes her chances with Shock and Grass. She's going to. Uh, try again to uh, grab Bubbles and shock her. Shock. And ro ro rolls very poorly. It does not hit Bubbles. And else is done. All right, back up to Bubbles. Alrighty. Well, Bubbles can fly now. Oh, Bubbles can fly now? Because she has a wing. Because <laughs> she's a fairy and she exactly. can fly now. Yes, she can. Uh, so Bubbles is gonna fly up. So she was setting us up so she could fly up and hit me. Gotcha. Yep. And then, uh, she is going to cast, uh, Thunder Wave. Nice. Um, so, I think this will also hit Elsa, because it's a 15-foot cube coming from me. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so that would be so you both need both Elsa Elsa and Steve need to make a constitution saving throw. Got it. Oh I have an eighteen. Oh Steve. Steve, you pass, so you're gonna take half damage, but sorry Elsa that ten is not a pass. Oh. Was that a constitution saving throw though? Oh, you know what? I did that wrong. Let me try that again. Like <laughs> I clicked that in the wrong may change spot. it. Nope, I don't think so. I mean, it's two more. It's the same roll, but it's two more. 
Um, but that's okay. Uh, so that is, yeah, my spell save DC is quite high, but unfortunately, uh, Steve makes it. So that's 2d8 of damage, and then Steve will take half. Oops, I clicked that twice. So I'm taking the six damage, five, but up six damage. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, also you'll take 11, and then Steve, you'll take the six, and then. Well, Elsa is down again. All right, Elsa has. Elsa's heart turns yellow, and so Elsa only has one one life left. And it is Steve's turn. Okay, so I will swing at this flying fairy and see if it hits. Okay. I'm going to attack the bubbles uh, with an eight. Flying fairy. This is not for damage because she's flying. I can't, it's not a she can block. So, what is the armor? Uh, that does not hit because my armor class is uh, 14. Okay, so, so that does not hit. It's a swing and a miss. Okay, I want to try with my shield because, well, why not? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Because, why not? That's a 18. Yeah, that'll hit. That'll hit. And I'm gonna roll. That's uh, hold on a second. That's one damage. I did talent because I was trying to figure out something, but it's only one damage. Okay. There's a one Sounds d4. Good. But that's it. Um, just swinging it with just a bit of battle of Elsa in the air. All right, um, Elsa, it's up to you again. All right, so Elsa is gonna use her full movement. Uh, and get 30 feet away from the action. And then he's going to cast Frostbite on Bubbles, which is a con 14 save. Okay. Come on, Bubbles. Nope, 11. <laughs> Take four cold damage. That's okay still. I'm, I'm still okay-ish. <laughs> also, I was reading this, and I didn't read it earlier. Uh, when you're get when you're hit with frostbite, you have disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll before the end of your next turn. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It wouldn't count on me anyway because I didn't even get to go on my next turn. I was holding the position. That is good to know. Um, already. All right. Um, it's back to bolts. I guess I will just. I will tr- cast ice knife and and try to uh, sling it at uh, Steve, uh, but that is a ranged spell attack at disadvantage because of the frost bite. A uh, nineteen to hit. Those were both really nineteen and twenty five. Those were really good rolls. They're they're double attacks. No, it's that was rolled at disadvantage. Oh, so the 19th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you're gonna take uh four piercing damage, and then you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Got a whopping five. Oof. Um. So then you'll take an additional eight cold damage. I'm dead. All right. So your heart fall out of the air and hit the ground. So your heart turns orange, and you are back to full health. I stand up, and I'm revitalized. All right, it is it is Steve's turn. Okay, being that I'm on the ground, I will now just attack the ground people. I'm attack Elsa. So keep in mind, Elsa has moved another thirty feet away. Okay, and I will move my thirty feet and attack. Okay. Oh, that hurt. That's a that's a net one. Okay, so long sword. Um, you um, you make to you make to swing at Elsa. You 
um, swing and you hit yourself in the arm instead. And what type of damage is the long sword? Slashing. All right, so you take um, a d6 of slashing. Whatever that d6 is going to be. Huh? You, you want me to roll it? I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, you can roll it if you want. Sure. Uh, that would be four damage because three is the, is the modifier. Okay. All right. Uh, Elsa, uh, it's your turn. Um, Elsa decides that she, she wants to try to compound Steve's failures and wow. um, <laughs> and tries shocking grasp again. All right. 19 uh, to hit. 19 does hit. Okay. Any uh, effects? Uh, let's see. You cannot take reactions until the start of your next turn. And that's it. All right. Back up to Bubbles. Alrighty. Well, since uh, Steve had such a great effect uh, on Bubbles attacking her from the air, uh, she's going to do the same thing to him. <laughs> yeah. that make sense? While he's still on the ground. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, with... With her little moon sickle, which Wait, kind of sounds like a popsicle. Did you fall down? I'm sorry. Yeah, I got, I died, so I fell to the ground. No, I mean after you died. I never got back you, up. I just stood up. But I mean, that was before I attacked you, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. was on the ground yeah. already, therefore okay. you could attack him. Yeah, oh. you were, you, were, you were able to attack. No, I was wondering because when you rolled the nat one. You just hit yourself. I was just making sure you didn't also fall down or something when you rolled. No, so that just damage. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So I just rolled the damage of this then. So you'll take seven slashing damage from the moonsicle that I found last time. And because okay. because the moonsicle is silver, um silvered Steve, weapon. Steve, you're actually going to take double damage. Oh because I'm you guys are... Raven Wolf. Far and I'm... What was the damage? <laughs> Seven? So fourteen. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. The heart <laughs> turns yellow and you have one life left. <laughs> Failure to communicate. Okay, failure, failure, failure. Dead. I got one life left. Okay. And it is uh, Steve's turn. Okay. Okay. Um. So I'm going to climb, fly back into the air. So I got hit by a fairy, and with a sickle, the bigger than it is. Pretty um, much. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to viciously, viciously by swinging an 18 and missing. Uh, 13 is 13, 13 not hit. Yeah, 13 is Yeah. I got you. Okay, so going to swing the shield. Okay. Does a 16 hit? Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Two bludgeoning damage with my shield. Alrighty. Still standing. <laughs> I pumped you with a shield. Like, I just tapped you with a shield. Okay. Didn't expect you to go fly across the thing. Okay. All right. Uh, it is Elsa's turn once again. So Elsa again is going to take her 30 feet, get as far away from them as possible, and, nice. you know, uh, again, try to cast Frostbite on Bubbles, Con 14. Oh, man. 22. <laughs> cool. I think you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Elsa's turn. All right, back to Bubbles. Alrighty. Well, Bubbles is feeling very emboldened by her new weapon doing so much damage. She's going to try swinging it again at Steve because he's up here with her in the air. Okay. 24 it's, to hit. It's, it's, it's. Alrighty. Four. Seven slashing damage, so doubled is another 14. Shit. That doesn't tickle. Okay. He just cackled. You, you wounded me, but I'm not dead yet. <laughs> you can do this all day? No, I can't do it all day. <laughs> <laughs> all day. 
<laughs> Alrighty, and that's that is my turn. Okay, Steve, it's you again. Okay, back to swinging at this tiny little fairy that keeps dodging my attacks. I am small. Before I do that, though, I'm going to heal myself. Because this hurts. So I'm going to use my lay on hands and give myself five points. Okay. okay. Uh, that'll be my turn. Because it's, Well, I can do the bonus action. Okay, back up to Elsa. All right, so Elsa goes to the max range of 60 feet for her frostbite spell, and again, targets bubbles. All right. All righty. Here we go. <laughs> 11. Oh, finally. Four cold damage. Okay. Oh, and... that was enough to take me down to zero. All right, so your heart turns orange and you fall down. But you're back at full health. Alrighty. Just remember you have disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll before yep. the end of your next turn. Yep. All right, and it is your turn again, Bubbles. And I will still try to attack Steve despite having disadvantage on that. Well, I don't think a, even a 10 would have hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, neither one. Yeah, no. Swing and a miss. All right. Uh, Steve's turn again. Uh, since I am advantage, I'm going to attack. Also, do I have to move my thirty feet towards, or did, move, did he move? Uh, did she move close to us? Elsa moved like almost sixty feet away from yeah. us. El- yeah, yeah. Elsa's sixty feet away now. Oh, you're sixty yeah. feet away. Okay, then I yeah. can. Yeah. I could. Okay. I was curious to know. Doing spells from 60 feet away. Gotcha. Nice move. Okay. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to actually chase Elsa. Um, I'm going to move my 30 feet and hold ready my, my action okay. towards uh, Elsa. And you're still right. flying? I am still flying. Okay. You're moving away from me. Can I get an opportunity attack? Yes. <laughs> So yeah, and he's I in the think, air, right? Yes, but I'm also in the air. Oh, you went back up in the air. Got it. Yeah, I haven't left the air since turning back into a. Yes. Oh, that's only a twelve. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tried. No, it was good. It was good. So, <laughs> so it made the difference of me actually getting away or me just falling to the ground and dying. I mean, that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Is it Elsa's turn again? Uh, yes, I believe so. All right. So, uh, can Elsa move a further 30 feet away? Um, I would say yes. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so then she goes another 30 feet away from, uh, from the action and now tries to cast Frostbite on, um, on Steve with Con 14 save. And I dodge. Not a constitution um, saving throw, I don't think. I don't think so. Well, okay, what do I need to roll? Uh, con save. No, I meant number. Oh, um, I guess... 14. Yeah, 14 or higher. Oh, nice. I nodded, then I accidentally hit it. I got excited. I was like, oh, it's good for the day. Well, Elsa's just looking very sad at this point. I'd say if there's no damage, I didn't get, like, half the damage, right? No, no. All right, it's Bubbles' turn. Uh, Bubbles is going to fly after Steve. Okay. And is she able to make it to him to make another attack? Uh, I'm going to say if Steve was able to get that close to Elsa, that you would also be able to get that close to Steve. 18 to hit. What's happening? I'm swinging at you again. Oh, so you followed behind me 30 feet and then attack me? Yeah. Okay. 18. 18. Meets it, beats it. Oh, just. Okay. Another 7, so 14. I'm dead. It's fine. Damage. <laughs> All right. So your heart just, it turns uh, black, and this time you are unconscious for realsies. Um, realsies. <laughs> yes. And then 
And then Glinda um, flies down in her bubble and she takes you up into the stadium and she um, heals you up there, but you are out of the fight. All right. Oh. I guess it's my turn. Yep. It's also turn. All right. And so now uh, Bubbles is 60 feet away from me. Probably uh, something. Or like 30 feet. Because well, I, I if went. Move, if you move your full movement, then yes, I'll be 60 feet away. Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to remember what that was because I thought at the, my, I thought at my last turn I was sixty feet away from him. Oh, well, maybe it is thirty then. Well, you've spent some time moving away. Well, I want to keep that sixty feet away. That's uh, can That's I fair. can I can I um, so am I thirty or sixty? Because I'm I've honestly lost track now. Well, if you do your movement, I'd say you're probably then sixty feet away again. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would say. So sixty feet away, and again frostbite. Okay. It's gonna keep sniping you as long as I can. Yep, that's fair. Nine. <laughs> that is a nine. Three frostbite damage. And I have disadvantage on my next attack. And that's it. Alright, back to bubbles. Alrighty. Alrighty. I'm gonna land back on the ground, and as I'm landing, I'm going to use my next, my last wild shape that I have, and wild shape into a lion. All right. Um, which then, so that is bonus action, and then I am going to run fifty feet as a lion. So I'm almost caught up to you, but lions have a uh, lions can pounce. As long as I move 20 feet straight towards the target. Okay. So I'm going to pounce at Elsa, who needs to make a strength saving throw, or you get knocked over with a lion on top of you. Oh, and you need to, it's a DC 13. You don't get knocked over, but a lion hits you. Lovely. And then I will make an attack against you with my claws, because that's plus five to hit. A 21 to hit. Can I cast shield on myself as a reaction? Yep. Yeah, go for it. Then I cast shield. So is, what does that bring your AC up to? Uh... Plus five bonus to AC until the start of my next turn. So what's your AC at then? Oh, fifteen. Oh, it didn't make it. Didn't didn't help, did it? it yeah. Oh, see, yeah, I didn't think about that. I should have saved okay. it. Oh well. Next time. We're learning. This is why. This is why we're in an arena. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty, so that's one d six plus three. Uh, plus three. So. F- Four plus three is seven points of slashing damage. All right. Well, Elsa knows she can't really run away, so she's just... I mean, your turn is done, right? Yep, that's it. All right. So just the good old uh, shock and grasp. (laughs) Ooh, 22 definitely hits. Yeah, that's the kind of day I'm having. Oof. All righty. Uh, Bubbles is now a lion. I'll be busy. Alrighty. Okay, I it's my turn now, so I am going to attempt to bite you for a twenty-one to hit. Definitely hits. And then it's a one d eight plus three. And Elsa's down. Elsa's down. You said. Elsa's down. All right, your heart turns black. You are also knocked unconscious for real. And Glinda swoops down in her little pink bubble, and she takes you up into the stands and heals you. So that means that our winner is Bubbles. All but mighty. Bubbles roars and then drops her wild shape as still as just like... (laughs) <laughs> in her little fairy form. The crowd primly but enthusiastically applauds. Glinda sub- summons her bubble, 
her bubble once more and flies down to the ground besides you. Smiling warmly, she says, Congratulations, Bubbles, my dear. As a reward for your triumph today, I give you... You get to roll on the magical item table again. Oh, okay. Uh, a D, just a D20, right? Yeah, yeah straight she D20. doesn't have enough cool stuff, right? Well, hey, I'm all about sharing. That's a five. Okay, let me see. What is five? You got the Bubble Blaster, a sling that fires 1d10 bubbles per long rest. Each bubble does up to 2d8 cold damage. And let me put that in the chat. Oh my goodness. It does seem fitting. It does. This is hilarious. Uh, okay. So, um, you got that. And in addition, um, she is going to award everybody... Um, uh, 100 extra gold pieces. So add that to your inventory. Okay. And you and you are all leveling up to three, and you can take one feat of your choice. You will be rewarded a new feat at six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and twenty. Oh, leveling up. Awesome. You did say the first feat, yes. Yeah, you get you get a feat. I, I'm doing it uh, like at pretty much every three levels. You get a new feat, except um, it skips from fifteen to twenty. Cool. So yeah, yeah. So um, just everybody uh, pick a feat. Uh, let me know what feat you got, and yeah. Might have to do some reading. Where do we pick our feats? Uh, let me see. What section is that on D and D Beyond? Uh, I think there's feats. And then if you scroll to the bottom, it says feats. And you go manage feats. Feetsies. Feetsies. Uh, which, which one was it again? Features and traits. Oh, I see. Are these feats that are that we are allowed to have, basically? Like, based on our character? Um. Yeah, it should be. Um. I, I would think I haven't used feats much on D&D Beyond, but I think it would tell you, like, you can't use that one because only tieflings can, or only like a uh, paladin could use that, or what have you. So I, I think it would not show ones that you can't use. Okay, because the only one that shows that it's available as a feat is firearm specialist. So I was like, oh, well, I was hoping there was a choice, but oh. Hmm. I thought there would be more, but I mean, um, there's probably stuff um, elsewhere if you look up feats, but that might just be all that's available on uh, GD Beyond with your account or what have you. I'll, I can send you a link to a list of feats because it might just not be showing on yours, so you might have to. Add that in separately. Manually? Yeah. Yeah. If you refresh the page, I did just enable content sharing, so you should have a lot more open up for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of resources on D&D Beyond. Is this, like, your website, or...? Uh, it just allows... The great thing about D&D Beyond is it's really good at sharing. So because we're in the same campaign i just enabled content sharing and so everything i have access to you now can see as well ah um i'm gonna take the lucky feet okay i have never i have never personally taken the lucky feet and i feel like that just would suit bubbles the best all right go for it i have to agree <laughs> that makes sense can you both heal Yep. Okay. Sirs don't get a don't get any healing spells, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But they get some pretty cool high level spells, so there is a good trade off. <laughs> I am going to take the tough feat. Oh, good okay. choice. Yeah, I would say that definitely suits Steve as well. I just have to say I'm overwhelmed with the choices here. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> There are so many. <laughs> you got choices. Now I got to figure out what both I'm. Yeah, see, I had to do this last week. I had to figure out my specialization of druid. Plus, it only gives me one. I have high charisma, so I, I like the idea of inspiring leader, but I don't know how useful it would be. I mean, there's also like other 
if yeah like that would boost your charisma because my charisma is already at 19 like if i was going to take a spell one which would be the most useful but yeah i i'm with you there i don't know how often you'd use that there's like uh some of the fey touched ones um which also gives you like a little spell that you can cast without using a spell slot uh, oh you can cast like you can cast misty step without expanding a spell slot yeah oh that's interesting oh but you can only do it once per long rest you can also cast you suppose using spell slots shadow touched is also like fey touched is like and shadow touched are kind of like similar in that regard telepathic um i always like uh Warcaster as a feat, um, because then it allows you, like, and you can use a spell to as an opportunity attack versus, um, like just using a melee weapon. Um, so Warcaster is always a good one. Another one I think that would be also kind of good for. Um, Elsa specifically would be the elemental adept for cold damage. So um, spells that you cast ignore uh, resistance to cold damage. So like anything that is like resistant to cold, they don't take half damage in that case. And then also if you roll a one on a damage dice, it automatically counts as a two instead. So like it increases your damage output a little bit. Those are my recommendations, though. Well, thank you. That helps me narrow down a little bit. <laughs> well, I think I have to go with Elemental Adept just because that fits the, the character. I can, I can get in more interesting as we go along, assuming I make it to level six. <laughs> I think I am good. All right. Awesome. I'm also good. Cool, cool, cool. So I also need to choose my meta magic, but I feel like I could do that after this session. Okay, if, if you okay want. That. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, if I have time to read through it in the next hour, I will. But but otherwise, I think I'm ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um, suddenly, the applause stops. Your audience seems focused not on the party and Glinda any longer, but the door leading into the stadium. You can barely hear it from here, but there comes a faint knocking, and you can see the door physically shaking. Glinda calmly pulls out her staff and approaches the door, which looks as though it shall burst open at any moment. After a moment, she gently opens the door and is nearly trampled by a young sea elf woman clad in the same red uniform as the rest of the bodyguards. The land yell, you know the rules. You may not enter the arena without an invitation. Linda scolds her, but she doesn't seem annoyed. In fact, she seems to be holding back a small, knowing smile. Panting, the young elf, Melandiel, says, Milady, lady, splendid news from Munchkinland. We have visitors from outside of Oz. A young witch and her pet. They arrived via flying house. Via flying house. And best of all, the child killed the wicked witch of the east. And, um... That's is um i think where we will end things on that uh cliffhanger we're not in kansas anymore dum, dum, <laughs> 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 uh.